This recording is about significant figures, uh, why we do significant figures, and how we do significant figures. Uh, perhaps you've done sig figs before and you've just sat there and wondered, why am I doing this? Why do I have to memorize these rules? Perhaps it's even made you a little upset when you've gotten a point deduction or you're just not sure why you're doing it. Let's take the example of a scale, a produce scale, and we've got some sort of big delicious apple that's been freshly picked. It's been put on the scale and the scale is going to read 0 0.4. Now, if the scale uh, units are kilograms, 0.4 kilograms is actually quite uh, quite a large apple. Now, uh, we don't know what the next digit is. We only know what the tenths place is. That could be a 1. It could be a 7. We don't know. Uh, in mathematics and in your math classes, 4 tenths uh, is the equivalent of 0 0.40000 uh, continuing. So... You know, in science, we have rules about those zeros. We don't know what those zeros are, and so therefore we can't say them. In math class, that's appropriate, but in your science classes, it's not. Let's take a look at another scale. And this scale uh, will have actually two delicious, ginormous apples on it. And in this particular case, the scale might read 0 0.83 kilograms. Now notice that this uh, orange scale on the bottom has a higher resolution. Uh, it can read to more decimal places. So instead of stopping at the tenths place, it goes up to the hundredths place. If we wanted to know the weight of these two apples, it w we could say something silly like 0 0.8325675 kilograms. That's a ridiculous amount of decimal places, a lot of resolution that we don't have. And uh, in this partic particular case, using this scale only gives us a resolution of two decimal places up to the hundredths place. So anything beyond that is conjecture. We have no idea what it is, and so therefore we don't convey it in our answer. That's why we do sig, uh, sig figs. Now let's take a look at the sig fig rules. Let's start with the golden rule, uh, the easiest one to remember, which is basically all non-zero digits are significant. So I'm going to split up the chalkboard here into there. There is a rule that's uh, specific to the left and right side of the decimal. If we're dealing with numbers to the left hand side of the decimal, then trailing zeros are not significant. Let's take a look at an example in the number 3200. That's actually got two sig figs, and the reason is the three and the two are significant, but the following two zeros are not. How about the number 78,300? How many sig figs are in that one? Well, that one's got three sig figs. We know that the non-zero digits are significant, and the trailing zeros after the three are not significant. So that's got three sig figs. When we're dealing to the right of the decimal, however, trailing zeros are significant. So take a look at this number, 7.00. That's got three sig figs. Of course, the 7 is significant, but those two zeros following it are significant as well because they're trailing zeros to the right of the decimal point. How about the number 17, uh, sorry, 17.320? Well, that one's got five sig figs. Of course, the non-zero digits are significant. And in this case, the zero, since it's to the right of the decimal point, is also significant, giving us a total of five. We can also say that all zeros between significant figures are significant. An example of that would be the number 3,008. That's actually got four sig figs, and the reason is we have significant digits at the end, in the beginning, the three and the eight, and that uh, basically brackets in the two zeros in the middle, which becomes significant to give us a total of four sig figs. How about the number 42.5003? Well, that one's got six sig figs. All of the non-zero digits are significant, but those two zeros bracketed by the five and the three become significant. Zeros to the left of a decimal point are significant. So this is an interesting case. It's kind of, The last two on this uh, particular screen are um, seldom used, but you'll see them from time to time. Let's take a look at the number 500. 500 has one sig fig. Of course, the two trailing zeros, since we're to the left of a decimal, uh, are not significant. If the decimal's not there, that's true. However, if we put it in, 500 with a decimal point actually has three sig figs. The five is significant because it's a non-zero digit. The zero 
is significant because we've added that decimal point, and since we're now bracketing the middle zero by two significant figures, it becomes significant. The last rule on this slide will be zeros with a line over the top of it are significant. This is kind of like when you're in a jam. How do you make these funky numbers uh, have two sig figs, like 500? Well, in this particular case, we've already established that that has one sig fig. But if we put a line over that middle zero, we would have two sig figs because the leading five and then the uh, following zero with the line over it are significant. If I move that line to the following zero, the one at the end, all three would be significant because we'd be bracketing the middle zero. When we're uh, to the right of the decimal point, placeholders are not significant. This is probably one of the hardest rules to follow. This is the last one, actually. Um, so let's take a look at the number 0 0.0003. It's not a trailing zero because that three is significant. So that's actually got only one sig fig, the three. The other three zeros are simply placeholders. Another way of thinking about this rule would be you could write things in scientific notation. Three times 10 to the minus fourth is actually just three moving the decimal plate uh, place four times to the right gets 0 0.003, which is where we started from. So I can write that with just one sig fig, three times 10 to the negative fourth. That's just one way of looking at it. Let's take a look at 0 0.0040. That's actually got two sig figs. Of course, the four, since it's non-zero, is significant, and the zero after it, because it's trailing the four, is significant. The other two are just placeholders. Let's take point zero seven zero three zero. That's got four sig figs. The seven and the three are significant. The zero is significant because it's bracketed by the uh, sig figs, the seven and the three, and then that trailing zero is significant. Let's take a uh, final look at some practice problems, A through here, E here. Now would be a good time to pause this video, answer the questions, and then play the answers. Go ahead and pause it. Okay, we've got four sig figs uh, for uh, letter A. Uh, of course, the three, the seven, and the two are significant, and the zero is significant because it's bracketed. B has two sig figs, the eight and the two. The zero is a trailing uh, zero left to the left of the decimal point, so therefore it's not significant. So that's got two sig figs. Letter C has two sig figs, the eight and the one. The other two zeros are simply placeholders. Letter D has four sig figs. The four and the six on the ends are non-zeros, therefore they're significant, and they bracket the middle zeros, which give us four. And finally, letter E has three sig figs. The four and the six are significant because they're non-zero, and of course, the zero with the line over it makes it significant. The other two zeros are significant. Now, wait a second, that's a mistake, actually, and what we'll find out is that that last letter, E, actually has five significant figures, and so there's a mistake here on this slide because they are trailing zeros to the right of the decimal point. So letter E has five sig figs.